Hi guys, this is Metro and today I am so, so, so excited to finally show you the new maps in Overwatch 2. Uh, we've been playing the Alpha for a while now, I was not allowed to share anything until now. <laughs> but today the embargo finally lifted and I'm allowed to show you everything. We're gonna bring out lots of new videos next few days. Uh, we talked about Sojourn already, check out the video in the description. And today we're gonna go over every single new map and I'm gonna give you like a, a quick run through through all of them. And I'm gonna give you my thoughts about how the map plays. Uh, what could be improved and um, keep in mind this is all alpha footage so nothing here is final and let's start off with the first map midtown now entering midtown all right so midtown is a hybrid map like king's row so the way it works is the first point on attack is gonna be um, a capture point and once you capture the point you have to push the card for two more points to win few interesting things what i noticed on the on these new maps i mean not only do they look fucking amazing there's lots of ways to attack from the footage we've seen so far most people don't even understand but this is the attacker spawn when you come in here usually what people do is they push high ground and then you go through this little train choke which is really hard to like break obviously and then you come up to high ground and you have to capture this point that being said there's also a way under where you just walk under and you get straight to point or you can walk into this little like side panel pants did and you get right to point and you can basically if you have a lucia you can just circumvent the other team run in and uh, get to point this feels like every other classic hybrid map the first one is not super hard to capture feels kind of like king's row you know like the defending team probably definitely has an advantage and once you capture first point door opens here and you will see a bot coming out or a cart and then uh, you will push down this lane here. This door is going to open and you will push down this lane um, up to second point. Now second point is where it gets really interesting. I, I love this design. Compared to like Overwatch 1 maps, the new maps have a lot of more high grounds, but they also have a lot of lot more ways to, to approach the attack. There's lots of small like alleyways you can take to, to flank. Whereas on, on, on classics like King's Row, there's only really like one flank route usually. And uh, most of these ways are really useful, especially with heroes that have like a lot of verticality, like like flyers or the new hero soldier, which uh, I talked about in the other video. So you come down here, push the card for here, and then um, if if you fight on low ground, obviously the other team is gonna have a high ground advantage here. And this is the, the 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 second capture point that the card has to go through. Then this little thing lifts down. This is also the the spawn of the defenders to defend second point. And once you get there and unlock this point, this is the final stretch of the map, which historically in Overwatch maps has been the hardest to capture. Um, and it kind of, it, it really reminds me of, of maps like, like King's Row 3rd or Blizzard World 3rd, where it, it's a bit, it, it seems a bit easier for the attacking team to get in, simply because there's not as much high ground and more angles of attack. But yeah, this map is really cool. Might be one of my favorites. All right, this is one of the new game types. Uh, there's a new mode called Push in Overwatch 2, and this is this is playing in downtown Toronto, I think. The way Push works, it's kind of the way you can think of it. It's kind of like a King of the Hill map, but it's con constantly moving from place to place. So it's like a it's a mix between Push the Card and King of the Hill is the best way I can describe it, which. In, in playtesting was really, really fun so far. It, the map is mirrored like a normal um, normal King of Dale map. Both teams spawn at the exact same time. And the first fight that's gonna happen is gonna occur around this midpoint. And the goal you have is to push this, push this little bot to the other side. The way it's gonna work is you start out here and usually the first fight breaks out here on the high ground. Lots of angles on attack, lots of angles for snipers. Snipers are gonna really excel on this map. Lots of angles you can take as a sniper or as a, like a longer range hit scan or, or projectile character. Way it works is you start, start off on your side. The first fight is going to break out in middle. As soon as one team wins the fight and starts pushing the bot, you see this little um, you see this little uh, line on the top. By the, uh, by the end of the time, whoever pushed this thing further, which the bot is going to is going to push, whoever has this thing more on the side of the enemy is going to win. Um, the, the robot behaves like a normal card, so it has a pretty long range, but if you're not close enough to it, it's gonna stop not moving, nothing's yet. gonna happen. Keep pushing. But the, the range is pretty forgiving, so you can be pretty far away and still get him to push. As long as one person is around the card, it's gonna push. But that being said, obviously if there's a 
there would be an enemy right here on, the, on this angle or something, the, the bot would not move until that uh, until the enemy is outside of the range of the bot. So as you can see, the uh, the, the movement speed of the bot is is slower than a, a usual card, but with the respawns, if you win a fight, you usually get enough time and like the, the, the distance it has to push to win the game. And you can straight up win the game by just pushing it to the end. The game is instantly gonna end if you push it to the end, but that rarely happens in playtesting. Um, it's usually a back and forth, like a King of the Hill, where the point flips multiple times. Um, but yeah, there are, there are checkpoints like this one, which enables a forward spawn, so if I would were to die now, I wouldn't spawn all the way back at my at my point, but I would spawn more forward. So the attacking team does not have an advantage per se, because the, the defending team always is gonna have the, the shorter spawn, but the attacking team, once you capture that point, is gonna have it a bit easier to actually hold the ground and, uh, and stop the other team from pushing it. Anyways, going over the map in general, if, if, if I were to leave the point now, an enemy would were to, to touch the bot, he would run back very fast because he doesn't have to push this card anymore, obviously. So, the time it takes, if the, uh, if the defending team right now would win a fight, the time it takes for the bot to run back to the middle and start pushing the, 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 bed, bed, um, the red marker is very fast. So the bot moves way faster when it doesn't have to push. Otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. It's a King of the Hill map. There's always going to be high ground advantage or uh, certain advantages for the enemy team. For example, this angle is really hard to break when you're the attacker. Because if, you, if you're standing right here, not only do you have medkits, um, there's really no angle for you to die here. You will have the high ground. There's like there's certain flag angles, but if there was a guy up here, like a Widow, Hanzo, or any kind of hit scan, you really, like the only way to really kill him is play cover behind your card, try to push, Pushing up there is really hard, as long as you don't have insane verticality like like Sojourn has, and I fucked up the jump. We cut that out. That's not in the video. <laughs> Anyways, um, again, there's a few, there's a few flanking points, but they're all really risky to take here, because if you if you're gonna run left, un unless you get a kill right now, the team can just turn on you, and you you really have no way back, and you die very fast. Otherwise, game mode really fun, and I like that they kept this map type kind of simpler, because the, the fight is always going to revolve around uh, around the robot. Think of the robot as like a moving king of the hill point, so to say. Arriving at Colosseo, and we are on Colosseo, the second map they showed in the alpha uh, with the new game type push. Again, kind of same idea as as uh, the Toronto map. Um, very different layout of the map though, very different layout. I've played this map quite a bunch and I still have no clue what's going on because th there's so, so many angles and so many little alleyways on this point yeah. or on this map that I, I barely have an idea what's going on. So first, first fight usually breaks out here, but there's so many ways to off angle that the first fight always seems really chaotic. You can go through middle, take the high ground in middle, Flank all the way behind them. I like that they put this cover here so you can't like super hardcore flank. Uh, if you're gonna take the flank, it's gonna be very risky. Anyways, uh, after the first fight pushed, uh, after the first fight happened, um, the attacking team is gonna slowly push towards here and we're gonna get to an area which is gonna be very, very defender side. This map is not the biggest, but what it, what it lacks in size, it really makes up in the in the amount of little alleyways and angles you can take to do to, to defend him. But as you can see, this is really scary for the attacking team. Once you move up here, if you don't you know, if you don't have a, a high jump to get to the high ground, there's really no way for you to get to high ground or even even a uh, fighting ground to the enemy team. To give you an idea, the enemy team spawns right here. This is the final point to attack. So the the, the enemy team can, can can take this angle. Take this angle, take this angle, and uh, all you can really do on the attacking team is try to stay around the low ground with the team and try to play really safe in order to push the cards. Once you get the forward, this is an, another one of these forward spawning points. Once you have them captured, um, the attack is going to get a tiny bit easier. But uh, in playtesting, I did not. I did not really notice the, the forward spawning point giving you a huge advantage. It, it's not like super far forward. Once you capture this point, you're still having to combat 
the enemy team on the high ground. So this is like a point that has flipped so many times in my playtesting. It's like one of the most hard-fought maps in the game. Like even if your team is way better than the other team, the amount they can do with, with, with just having like a better positioning it is insane. And once you get to up here, it becomes a bit more doable. Because if you ride around, if you play here, you can actually fight on even ground with the enemy team. That being said, they're still gonna have way faster spawn than you. So again, same idea as on, on, on the Toronto map. Getting to the final checkpoint is really hard, and I don't think in your games, unless it's a really one-sided stomp, you will rarely see the, the last point being captured. The last point feels like a... I don't want to say 2CP, because I, I want to associate 2CP with something bad, but the last point is going to be very hard fought, and the spawn of the enemy is right here. It's a really fast spawn. So, in order to capture here, you will need to play your absolute best. The map is so pretty, though. Look at this. This is this is such a cool map design. Like the, the Overwatch maps have always looked amazing, but I think I think the the map design has really brought it out of the park with this one. It looks so good. Welcome to Circuit Royale. And here we are on the final new map we were able to play for the Alpha Circuit Royale. This is a classic push the card map. Very straightforward. Just like. Dorado, Route 66, and this is actually my absolute favorite. Not only does this map look insane, it's also got such a great map design. As the attacking team, you're gonna push out here and you're gonna immediately notice it's very wide open spaces, but not as long range as something like Havana, right? So snipers are gonna be good here, but they're not gonna be overpowered. Um, the defending team here has lots of ways to defend. They can start right here, spawn camp, um, try to keep them, uh, try to keep the attacking team in their spawn. By the way, we're pushing a race car. Lots of angles. First point, again, historically pretty doable for the attacking team, and I think this map is no exception. Um, there are quite a few high grounds, but there are ways for the attacking team to get up there. If there's a diva, they can just fly up here, or you can just walk up the stairs, try to contest them here. And around this corner, we're already gonna be at the first capture point. So once you break this defense, which I think is going to be the main defense for the defending team, simply based on the high ground, you're going to come around the corner here. And I'm actually lying. There's another pretty easy to defend point. So this is probably going to be the, where the first fight breaks out. Once you win that fight, if the attacking team is back fast enough, they can actually contest this point from high ground. And this is where it gets really, really hard to push the card. This is one of the harder points to capture. One of the harder points to capture in the entire game, in my opinion. Once you capture your first spawn point, you're gonna see there's this very, very long way you have to go up where the team can shoot you from all angles. There's some flank angles for you to take here, but if you look at it from above, this is this is sniper heaven. This is hit scan heaven. You can just sit here, lay down on the enemy, lay down on the cart, fall back. So many angles to attack, so many high grounds to take. And I've, I don't even, I've never used these, these flanking alleys, to be honest. Again, like the main thing with these maps is they added way more routes of attack, which I really like. It's gonna make the game faster, not as stationary, you know. So many maps in Overwatch 1 right now are very much about everyone staying around the card and playing very stationary around the card. But with these, all these attack angles, you have one way on the right, one way on the middle you can take up. You can take this left little way, you can take the high ground here. So there's so many, so many creative ways to approach the map, which is really cool. Yeah, apparently in the future, Formula Lux, um, not as fast as Formula 1, but you know, we're not complaining, we're playing Overwatch. And once you get up here, I think it's a pretty easy ending push to the second point. Right here, it's not really an advantage for the defending team anymore. Um, they're gonna respawn right here. Like behind this behind this hotel on, this so once you're up here as the attacking team it's gonna be really hard for the defending team to retake kind of like numbani second right like once once you lose one fight on second it's over but that first fight is gonna be brutal because you you will have to take that high ground and here we come into into the hotel because apparently that's where cards drive nowadays reception i actually don't know in which country this map plays like i've played like at least 10 matches on this map and I still do not know how this point works. So for the attacking team you can you can take the high ground but so can the defending team. So many angles again. Such a like 
I don't want to say weird. I like just such an interesting map layout. Like so many ways to, to approach this map. And I'm sure once we play the map more, people will figure out how it works. But here you come in. This is going to be the final point. And this, this reminds me very much of Havana on the very end, where you have to go through that arch, right? And people can attack you from every angle on the high ground. Really, really hard to capture. As, as long as the defending team has that high ground here, which I think you can get up to, yeah. Really hard to get in here. There's one, one attacking point that you can take as the attacking team. You can come around here, abandon the card, have your tank on card or have one of the healers on card, and you take the high ground, but you have to go all the way around. Beautiful skyline, by the way. But you have to go, you will have to go all the way around to take the side ground, right? So by the time you're up here, you already basically wasted like 30 seconds, which is a full fight. But this is like the easiest way to get in, right? So if you take this high ground, you're actually right in a spawn, right? So you will have to kill them fast, get back on cart here, nice work, and get it to the very on. end, which is right here. Hard fought point, but I, I love this map. I don't know. This map is, has been so much fun, and I, I can't wait to play it more in the beta. And I think that's going to be it. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the chat. I'll try to answer every single one of them. Again, we haven't played this for a long time, so I might not know everything, but uh, anything you're curious about, let me know if you want to know any specifics of the maps. And for the future, there's going to be new gun sound comparisons. Um, there's going to be new overviews. We're going to look at every change of every hero that's in the alpha or in the beta so far. So we're going to look at what changed with McCree, what changed to stuns. We're going to look at Doomfist, the new Doomfist as a tank. And uh, yeah. I'll hope to see you all there and uh, until next time, see you guys, bye bye.